Good evening, welcome. Welcome to our night prayer. And I'll give people a moment to sign on and we'll begin at eight. Good to be with you today. We have some offerings coming up from others other than myself that I'm going to talk about at the end of the prayer tonight. You may have participated in the Compline service that Brian Justice um, led us in last night, Sunday night, um, and he is going to be doing that again, and I'll tell you about that at the end of our service tonight. Got some beautiful prayers. If you were here last Monday, they might sound familiar because they are the same ones I did. Um, I just love these prayers because they provide so many images and um, the sound of the words is really lovely. Okay, it's eight. Welcome everyone to um, Celtic Night Prayer. I'm Hilary Smith with the Church of the Holy Comforter in Richmond, Virginia. And we are using J. Philip Newell's book, Celtic Benediction. And these are the prayers for Monday night. We begin with an opening sentence from Psalm 90. This is verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever had you formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I'm going to say that one more time. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And now we are invited to be still and become aware of God's presence within us and all around us. An opening prayer. In the infinity of night skies, in the free flashing of lightning, in the whirling elemental winds, you are God. In the impenetrable mists of dark clouds, in the wild gusts of lashing rain, in the ageless rocks of the sea, you are God, and I bless you. You are in all things, and contained by no thing. You are the life of all life, and beyond every name. You are God, and in the eternal mystery I praise you. The scripture and meditation part has two different readings, short readings from scripture. The first is from Psalm 84, verse 5. Happy are those whose strength is in you. And from John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 8. Jesus said, The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. I'll read those again. Happy are those whose strength is in you. Jesus said, The wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. A 
love those readings. Um, some of you last week said how much you liked the one about the wind blowing where it chooses. And every time I read that, I, in some ways I feel the same about it, and in other ways I feel like there's fresh understanding, fresh insight, grace from God about it. And at a time when we wish we could control so much that we absolutely cannot control, the idea that we can never control the wind, right? <laughs> There's so much about life. And yet the wind is part of God's wonderful creation. We don't know where it comes from. We don't know where it goes. There's a freedom in that too. I think that's how that relates to the last sentence. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. It's really nice to have certainty. It's really nice to be in control. But at the same time, there's a freedom about our lives as people born of the Spirit. Spiritual beings in a material world, right? Um, there's a freedom there that nothing about our material world can can pin down you know we are we're free in god the other thing that came to me tonight with this was the idea of uh labyrinths i know a lot of you like labyrinths a lot i do and for those who may not be familiar with the labyrinth or just to remind us all again a labyrinth sometimes people will call it a maze but a labyrinth isn't a maze, because in a maze you can get lost. You can end up at a dead end and not be able to go anywhere. But in a labyrinth, the path twists and turns, but it leads to the center. There is no way to be lost. And this is life in God. No matter what's going on, it is all leading and in right now, in God. We're actually in the center right now. Um, but, you know, in our lives, we go here and there, um, and it's all leading to God's embrace, always. And I find that super, super comforting. So if you have some sort of labyrinth at home, like a hand labyrinth or a picture of one, or you could go online to find one, you can, you can use your finger and you can go through the labyrinth design and meditate on how we can never be lost. God's got it. God has us. And now prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. For your spirit woven into the fabric of creation, for the eternal overlapping with time, and the life of earth interlaced with heaven's vitality, I give you thanks, O God, for your untamed creativity, your boundless mystery, and your passionate yearnings planted deep in the soul of every human being. I give you thanks. Grant me the grace to reclaim these depths, to uncover this treasure, to liberate these longings, and in being set free in my own spirit to act for the well-being of the world. Now we are invited to recall the events of the day and pray for the life of the world. And as usual, if you would like to type in some prayer requests or pray by typing some words, please do. And we'll have some silence while we all either offer prayers aloud in that way or in our hearts.
a closing prayer. O brother Jesus, who wept at the death of a friend and overturned tables in anger at wrong, let me not be frightened by the depths of passion. Rather, let me learn the love and anger and wild expanse of soul within me that are true expressions of your grace and wisdom. And assure me again that in becoming more like you, I come closer to my true self, made in the image of outpouring love, born of the free eternal wind. Amen, amen. Oh, I love that. That's such a great prayer. Thank you for being here tonight. I want to give you a little information about our online worship. So let me look at my notes. <laughs> Tomorrow night, Tuesday night at 8 p.m., Deacon Joe Kleinsman will lead us in sacred space. On Wednesday, I will be back with Wednesday night prayer, Celtic night prayer from this book I'm using. Thursday... Deacon Joe will be leading a Celtic evening service, and there's actually going to be a bulletin for this. So look out for that. We'll probably be able to post it on Facebook and or on our website or some combination of those. Friday night, we will have Compline with Brian Justice, who is a diaconal intern at Holy Comforter. All, the, all these services are at 8 p.m., so Friday night at 8, Brian will lead Compline again. Saturday night, I will be doing the night prayer. And Sunday night, as he did last night, Brian will lead Compline on Sunday night at 8. Um, on Sunday during the day, we'll have our usual 10 a.m. service and 4.30 p.m. story time service, doing that every week during this time, in, these, in this situation, these circumstances. All of this is going to be or is already posted on our website if you didn't get all that. <laughs> I'm really, really delighted that others are sharing, leading these prayers at night so that we can have some more variety and hear some different voices. So I give thanks for Joe and Brian and for all of you, for all of you being here and for our Holy Comforter community and the community that we are building through Facebook, through these services, um, with people around the country, possibly around the world. I'm very thankful for all of you. Remember, you are God's beloved. And may you have a peaceful evening.